everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And on tonight's show, I'm pleased to have on a returning guest. I've had him on quite a few times, and it's been a while since I've been one-on-one -on -one with him. And he's a fantastic coach for Lewis Mills for boys basketball, Ryan Raponi. Ryan, once again, it's a pleasure to be able to have you on. Merry Christmas and a happy new year to you. Yeah, yeah. Same to you, Chris. I, I appreciate you having me back on. It's been a while, but you're doing a great job, uh, you know, highlighting the, the talent in, in the high school sports, you know, football and everything. You've been busy, but I appreciate you, you know, getting around and having me on. Uh, this, you know, really been looking forward to it. I have too. And, you know, I, I've been keeping track of Lewis Mills from afar. I know, obviously, I haven't been able to broadcast a game. Maybe that could change some point in the future if I can work some things out. But I know, you know, for people who may not know, and I won't give away everything, kind of just go into a little detail about how the season's been going for Lewis Mills. Well, you know, and, and we'd love to have you over at the Thunderdome. You know, we got a great uh, student section over there and, you know, and, and, and hopefully we could get them back in the mix at, at some point this season if, if this stuff starts to cool down. But yeah, it's been, it's, it's been a little bit of a challenge um, so far, you know, with, with all the protocols that, you know, we've been having to deal with, but we're, we're not the only ones. We know that a lot of coaches and a lot of programs have, have been experiencing this and, and a little bit of adversity, you know, is, is what we're facing right now with our numbers, but we, we have enough guys to play and, and guys are stepping up. Uh, we've been very competitive, you know, our first night, you know, when we had our full roster for the most part, a uh, great comeback win against South Windsor at home. Uh, down nine points going into the fourth quarter. Uh, and, and uh, you know, we're led by, you know, our, our guys and Bryce Waldron, who's a returning all-conference player for us. And uh, John Sheeby, you know, hit some big three-pointers down the stretch that night. Um, you know, Kobe Cables is a three-year starter for us, and he did a great job defensively on the glass. And we had a sophomore point guard, you know, make his debut in the starting lineup and Charlie Joyner that night and, and really propelled us. Uh, defensively back into the game. So that was a fun night for us. And, you know, the crowd rushing the floor, it, it felt good to be back, you know, playing high school basketball again and, and coaching it uh, and just seeing the enjoyment on, on the players. But, you know, after that, we, we've, we've faced a couple, you know, protocol issues and um, we've, we've been down a few guys, you know, but like, like I tell the players, it's, it's just an opportunity, you know, for some of these guys that don't have as much varsity experience or any, for that matter, you know, we're, we're starting at this point, only two guys that really have varsity experience from last season in our lineup. And we got a lot of, you know, guys stepping in into roles uh, that they're not familiar with yet, but you know, the, the kids are, they're prepared um, every day to come out and give a great effort. And uh, we've, we've been able to jump out to some leads and, you know, unfortunately, you know, when it comes down the stretch, uh, we just haven't been able to to finish those games off, but I I think with with the time and the experience that these guys are getting here, it, once we get back to full strength, it, it's only going to add to our depth, um, you know, and, and we hope we could turn it around. You know, I want to hit on the fact of the the early leads and then kind of losing them late, and to not and I don't want to say that the players that you have right now, because obviously the ones that are not there can't do much, but. To not, I don't want to say that the players can't finish because I think it's just all about experience, being a young team, getting those reps, and then maybe at some point, you know, once the light goes on, it's it's game over. But do you think kind of going through the growing pains, I guess that, that's what I'm trying to say, going through that now could only benefit this team as the season continues if we can have a full season and such because not only will the players who – may not play as much once the players who are key guys, the main guys come back, that will give you not just depth because now you've seen what they can do, but then you're getting the key cogs back who you already know. So you're talking about a full picture team right there. Yeah. I mean, ultimately what, what, what you hope happens uh, when those guys return is exactly what you just said. Um, and, and I, and I, I talk a little bit, I try not to talk too much about the past, you know, but a, a couple seasons ago, um, in my first season at Lewis Mills, we started off 0 and 6, you know, and, and those, and we were dealing with a lot of players that didn't have a lot of varsity experience at that time. Uh, the previous team had graduated, you know, some, some pretty key players and, you know, it took us a little bit, you know, to get adjusted to 
having the lead and then, and then keeping the lead and finishing the game off. And once we were able to do that, you know, we were able to propel ourselves into the tournament and, you know, win our eight games. And unfortunately, you know, it, it got canceled before we were able to play, but I I've talked about that just to draw that experience because there are guys that are part of this group right now um, that, that saw that happen and were part of that, you know, and now they have to pass that experience on to these younger guys and just let them know, listen, this is okay. What you're going through right now, this is part of it. You know, winning varsity basketball games is, is not easy. You know, it, it takes hard work. It takes determination. It takes execution. Um, and, and just because it's not happening for you right now, this is definitely something, you know, that you're capable of doing. So continue to keep working. And then, like you said, I think if we get some guys back in the mix, you know, then guys could kind of go back to their, you know, their roles uh, where they may be a little bit more comfortable, but the fact that they've been stretched to that, point where they weren't comfortable at one point is going to only make them better how are the younger players I don't want to say responding but how are they reacting to your you know the coaching that because I'm sure obviously it's a little bit different than you know if it's just practice or it's a JV game it's it's a much different pace the expectations are a little bit more how are they you know, as far as practice, especially now, because with protocols and COVID and everything else, you just don't know from day to day. So how has that been for them going through this, the growth, basically? It, it's, it's been interesting. And it's funny you mentioned that because I, I just pulled a couple real young, you know, a couple freshmen aside that have been in the mix with us at, you know, varsity practice. Um, and, and, and they're a promising group, you know, they're battling in their games and they're, they had to play a Froshmore game yesterday, you know, with Maloney, just because we, you know, um, we wanted to have a game and have everybody have the opportunity to play, but they couldn't, you know, field the two full teams. Right. So I pulled these three guys aside and I just said, Hey, I appreciate your flexibility because, you know, one day they're coming down and practicing with us, you know, um, and they're splitting time maybe in the varsity gym. And then they're going down and working with their, their freshman teammates too, you know, and, and you're just trying to keep that um, number one, you like having continuity throughout the program. And, you know, my, my JV coach, uh, you know, Rich Klett's been with me, you know, in, in all the years I've been at Lewis Mills and Zach Vitale, my freshman coach has been there. Uh, my varsity assistant, my coach keeps been there the whole time. So we have continuity on the staff. So we're whatever practice that they're in, and whoever's leading them at any point, um, you know, they know what the goals are. So that's the good thing. But for them to come up and experience the intensity, you know, I've been told that I can be intense at the time, you know, but um, for them to experience that and be right up front, you know, and, and we've had a couple guys get in the mix, you know, um, you know, and for these other guys that have really been picking up the slack on the minutes, like, you know, Jack Stanislaw is a junior, but this is his first year playing uh, significant varsity minutes. He's an all-conference football player, you know, but he's a good athlete, but now he's getting the experience of playing hoop. Logan Cowger is an all-conference football player. You know, now we're looking to him for for more, you know, in terms of minutes, and he's in a starting role, you know, and, and uh, Connor McAtee has been, you know, doing doing the job at point guard for us right now, and, you know, he, he didn't he, – didn't play varsity last year. So those guys are getting a lot of valuable experience. Um, they have the ability. And I think that they're going to slide nicely into their supporting roles, you know, when we could get guys back, but yeah, they're seeing what it's all about, Chris. They definitely are. It must be a family thing because uh, someone who is related to you, Pete Flamia, who's the head football coach at career and now also uh, is a basketball coach. He's dabbling his feet in the, you know, putting his feet in the water for that very intense maybe not for basketball because i haven't seen him yet but for football known him for many years the dude is passionate loves the game of football is a very don't take his physical appearance for like oh he may not know he knows football and he's a defensive like the way like i would ask him you know how are you going to go up against x team or y team and the way that he describes how he's going to schematically defensively go up against the team i'm like you're way too good for me. Cause I I'm, th this is like high level stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, Pete, Pete's married to my cousin, you know, but uh, you know, we're, we're, we're family now. Right. And uh, it's always nice to see Pete at a family gathering and talk coaching. Um, you know, he's, he's been in it for a long time. 
Uh, and he's got experience in every sport. You know, he's done football, he's done baseball, and now he's in the mix, you know, doing hoops. And um, I, I think we definitely, you know, see eye to eye on, on, you know, how you're trying to develop, you know, your, your entire program, you know, and you're making this an experience, you know, for the, the young man, you know, that you're trying to develop, not just as a, as a player, but, you know, as a young adult, you know, and, and as a high character person. And, and, and Pete definitely is a high character coach. I know that. And, and he definitely is prepared. And uh, I respect that about him. I want to go back, Coach, to when you were talking about the younger players. Because if I remember right, I think last year, the freshmen, like you couldn't have them together. It kind of had to be separate, right? Yeah. So, you know, last year, you know, with everything that was going on, you were, wor- you know, you were concerned about uh, having somebody you know, have, have a case and become a close contact and then losing a large group of people as a result of that, you know, so we really had to make a hard line in in terms of who practiced with freshmen and who practiced with JV and varsity and, and who dressed and who played, you know, which, you know, made it difficult because that's not typically how, how we work, you know, I mean, a lot of my experience and most of it in basketball, you know, was at Bristol Eastern high school, you know, under Mike Giovanazzo you know, and, and I also coached with, you know, Bunty Ray, who's now the head coach over there, right? And, and a lot of what we did to get guys experience a lot of time was, hey, you know, bring, bring the young kid up and, and throw him in the mix, you know, one day and, and see how he, you know, how he adjusts to it and tell him, hey, this is what it's like and bring that back down to your team now, you know, bring that intensity down and, and bring that, you know, level of execution and focus down there. And it, it, it feeds for the whole program. So, we're in a position now this season where we're having the opportunity to do that with some of these young guys. And, and I think it's, it's value, um, you know, for that continuity. It's funny that you mentioned as far as, you know, giving players an opportunity, no matter how young they are, because they need the experience. Uh, the coach at Simsbury for girls basketball coach Zulo has done a fantastic job. And he, he talked about when he was up in New York, how he would actually have players, you know, he didn't matter if they were in, six, seven, eighth grade, whatever it was, if they're ready to play, you're, they're ready to play. He threw them out to the wolves, or not the wolves per se, but like, if you're ready to play, go, you need to struggle. You need to, have, because you can't, you can't get those reps in practice. There's only so much you can do. And I think, cause you and I were, were talking a little bit and I think oh, there's going to be a lot of teams that will be shorthanded. Look, we mentioned career Academy. They had nine players, six of them had zero varsity experience. Torrington, I don't know their their deal, but they only had eight players. There's going to be a lot of teams, and I think it will happen in, in the state tournament too if we get there, and I hope not. But the fact that there's going to be teams that don't have the stars, don't have the big-time players, and even though you may struggle if you can play early, just think about how much better those players could be later in the season and then if your team gets to states. Like prime example, what, what I mentioned with your team, where – you don't have the big players right now, but when they come back, you combine that with the players who have experience. I don't know if, I don't know if anybody notices that, but it's, it's a positive step, even if it looks like a negative, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, and, and you see it, I, you know, I know that, you know, high profile in, in the NBA and in, and in a college game and, you know, you see guys missing, you know, for, for these teams every night. And unfortunately you see UConn going through it with, with their situation and, and not being able to, to play right now, you know, which is, which is the hardest situation, right. When the whole program gets put on a pause. Yeah. Um, but as long as we're there, you know, and I, I think any coach that I talk to for the most part where yes, you know, you feel bad, you know, I had seniors, you know, I've had some seniors that, you know, that have been out and haven't been, you know, getting the, you know, what they feel is probably the most of their senior year experience right now, but you know, um, we're getting a few, you know, back and we hope that they can return and, and get into the mix. But at the end of the day, we're happy to be out there. Um, I'm happy to be out there teaching the game every day. Um, I, you know, I'd like to think I'm, that my, my players are happy to be there playing. You know, it's, it's better than the alternative. And yeah, like you said, um, the experience that they're getting at this point can only help them moving forward throughout the season and to be prepared if anything, you know, were to happen in, like you said, a state tournament situation. And we, we hope by then that everything is, is past and, 
and that everybody can be at full strength for those types of situations. Um, but I think we know that to expect the unexpected at this point and, and everybody, and I, I tell everybody in the program, you just don't know what night your number is going to be called at this point. And I, and I do credit, you know, my, my younger guys for being ready and, and, and be ready to step up and get into the ball game at this point. No, I want to go into some of the games that you have coming up. I know you talk about having Platt, you know, coach Moncrief always does a fantastic job with his players. I know he was very high on his team and I, you know, I know they may have come out the gates a little bit, but they're a very good team. I know Anthony Namani, who I've had on the podcast is a top 25 player, in my opinion. I mean, he's, he's long, he's lanky, he's a freakish athlete. I mean, the kid could wake up and dunk, doesn't even have to stretch. Um, but he's got a pretty good team as well with some other complimentary pieces around the money. Um, but just speaking of the CCC in general, um, you have, you know, there's really, like you said, there's no night off. You have to be prepared as not just a coaching staff, but as a team, no matter who you have or don't have. And you've got a tough stretch coming up. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. And, and no disrespect to any other league out there. Every, every league is, is competitive, you know, and, and you're trying to match teams up, you know, in, in that regard. And, and listen, we played some tough, you know, N triple C teams last week. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, high respect for teams in the Berkshire, you know, um, that, that are, that are off to really good starts. We have to match up with a couple of them, you know, later on in the season. Uh, you know, but I'm a little biased, you know, being uh, from the CCC initially and, and spending, you know, most of my career as a, as a player and a coach there. Um, yeah, you know, there's no nights off. And, and like you said, you know, uh, Coach Moncrief, you know, he's got a good group. And we remember going over there um, to Platt a couple years ago um, and, and they weren't having their best season. But uh, Nemani was a freshman and uh, man, he was a player. You could see that right off the bat. And they gave, gave us a very tough uh, game that night. They jumped out on us, and I think they smelt the win. And, and, and we had the experience throughout the season that it started to season us a bit, and we were able to come back and snatch one. They tied it with a three in overtime, and we were able to still, you know, per persevere and, and pull out a W, which ended up leading to a three-game win streak for us back then. But, yeah, so we'll be seeing them for the first time since then. So I'm sure that they're going to want to come in and – you know, and, and, and take us down. And, and that's, that's how every coach is looking at it, moving, you know, into these games, everybody's trying to win and they're preparing for that. So yeah, we see Platt. We also see Bloomfield this Friday night, who's off to a very good start, but hasn't played in a few weeks. Um, and then uh, we have a three game week next week because we did get backed up because of a couple postponements and uh, we play Berlin and Plainville, you know, who, who are both tough and, and well coached, you know? So yeah, there's no night for us that we can look at and say, all right, we're definitely going to take that one. You know, let, let's rest. Uh, there's, there's no opportunities for that. You, you have to be prepared every night. You have to go out, execute your game plan. And, and then when the going gets tough, you know, and, and that scoreboard is lit up with the number four on it and that clock's running down, you know, you have to continue to be able to do those things and have that mental, physical and emotional toughness to pull it out. Have you talked with your team at all about potentially, like you said, how next week you have three games? That could be a common occurrence depending on what happens with the cases and if the games are allowed or not or postponed. Because like I've, I've told many, many coaches and they don't have to hear from me. Even though the season's early, time's running out as far as trying to make up these games and find common because everybody's trying to, you know, because you're looking at your calendar like, oh, does this day work? No. Does this day work? No. Like you almost want to make up a day just so you can get the game in. Uh, has that been running through your mind at all or no? Uh, well, you know, my mind, we're, as a coach, you're always, you know, looking, you know, towards the future as, as much as we don't, you know, talk about, you know, it with the team all the time. It's, it's, it's more of a kind of a day to day basis, you know, mm -hmm. with what we got going on there, but you talk about it at the beginning of the season, you know, and, and you let them know that, Hey, this, we could have a three, three game week. We could play a back to back, you know, and it's a good thing. Um, you know, my girlfriend, she has a calendar in the kitchen where she has, she's able to erase things with the marker, you know, because things change all the time. I feel bad. You know, I'm not the best guy to schedule stuff with all the time, but you know, she's been a good sport about it. And, and I was just talking to my athletic director, uh, Jay Pulcher, who does a great job for us over there. 
and and we're looking at well the possibility of snow on this day and and what we're gonna do if 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 it does snow and how we're gonna you know make this up and you know we had a game with Bristol Eastern and you know and my buddy Bunty Ray get canceled you know a couple weeks ago um you know because of you know just they were just worried about the COVID issues and everything and you know so we had to work some things out to get that made up uh, and we both are forced to play three game weeks but you know, we try to make it equitable, you know, for everybody in those situations, but in terms of the team and the kids, like, yeah, you're coming in day to day, you know, with, with your game plan, uh, Bloomfield is our focus right now. You know, we're playing them Friday night and, uh, today our focus was on us. Um, you know, like we said, we lost a tough one credit Maloney for hanging in there. Um, even though we were up pretty big in the first half and, you know, and, and credit, uh, I think, um, the player's name was Lee who, who made the shot and a, a loose ball got tapped out a, a rebound on a bad miss. And, you know, they ended up, you know, getting, getting the ball in the right guy's hands and he knocked down the three and, and they pulled it out in overtime. So credit them. So our focus today was on us though, you know, and, and just making sure that the, the players understand, you know, kind of the things that may have, you know, cost us our opportunity to win last night and the things we did well that put us in the position to win you know, and to keep doing those things and uh, get ready for our next game against Bloomfield, you know, and, and it's day to day with the players. Um, but yeah, as a coach, you do have to peek down there because you got to set up your scouting reports. And, you know, if you can get to a game, you know, nowadays you, you try to, if, if you got to get them on the live stream, you do. And there's a lot of preparation involved. Absolutely. Hey, if you want to watch a live stream and it's an NBO game, could potentially hear my voice. I know they've been doing that a couple of times with the live stream having, and even putting the camera on myself and my partner. It's been pretty cool. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I tell you, and, and I just like watching, you know, I love basketball in general. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I like watching, I do like to watch other leagues too. So I'm definitely going to have to, you know, check that out because, you know, you know, once, if you make the state tournament, you know, you're going to have to play teams outside. Um, and, and every league, you know, every league's playing hard. Every league's got good coach and every league's got top players in it. But from league to league, the type of game being played is sometimes a little bit different in terms of style. Right. So, you know, you, you want to be a little bit familiar with with having a look at what goes on in other areas of the state, you know, to give yourself an opportunity to game plan. If you're lucky, you know, if you're lucky enough to get in there and, mm -hmm. and match up, you know, late in the year especially too for like on my side selfishly being able to see teams like being able to you know to do this is great as far as going outside the NBO and being in the FC Act, the CCC, the ECC, the NTRIPC, so on and so forth but actually broadcasting a team who I have not seen or know very little and seeing them for the first time and being able to talk about the teams they played and their history I don't know. I just enjoy that. And I feel like it was taken away last year because obviously there was no state tournament. It was taken away the previous year because that's when COVID was happening and everything was canceled. So I'm hoping that we can get to that and have an opportunity to kind of make up for the lost time. Now things have to go our way. And I mean, I've said the next seven to 10 days are crucial for a lot of things, you know, as far as for school, first and foremost, because it's student athlete, not athlete student, but I'm just hoping that things can go for once the way of the people who've been working so hard for the kids, you know, and like yourselves, the coaches who've been dealing with so much for now three years. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and you'd really love it, you know, for, for the players at the end of the day that, you know, it, it have that season come down the stretch and, and have the opportunity to make a tournament. You know, that that's always the goal is to play as long as you possibly could. Um, and, and we do mention, you know, the fact that, you know, we had some seniors two years ago, you know, who were who were great kids, you know, that didn't have the opportunity to play in that game. And we had some players, you know, last season, you know, that that they played 12 games, tournament experience and everything like that. But, yeah, it wasn't the same, you know. So, you know, it's one of those things where we want to do what it takes, you know, we we want to do what it takes to get ourselves in there and to have that experience. And, uh, and those guys, you know, that graduated, you know, that are off to, you know, great things, you know, they're, they're all in college, they're all doing their thing. Some of them, you know, I, I mentioned a few guys playing Tommy Marnotti's playing basketball at, um, you know, Southern Maine community college right now. And, uh, Josh Martinotti, you know, is a, is a football player at Southern Connecticut and, 
and uh, Jake Lom, Nikki graduated last year and they took care of it. You know, those guys, you know, um, they didn't have the opportunity to play in a tournament. So we, we do look back and we think, and we say, Hey, let's, let's, let's get there for, for those other guys and, uh, that didn't have the shot. Ryan, it's great to be able to have you on. I could talk to you forever. I know I talked to you before we started this, but you know, trying to make, you know, catch up on lost time. But once again, it's great to be able to have you on, man. And hopefully I can do a game for you guys this season. If not, at least catch a game sometime before the season ends. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, we'd love to have you in there, man. Uh, you know, that'd be awesome. And uh, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, this is this is great, you know, for the for the players that you bring on and, and for us coaches to, you know, to highlight. Um, you know, I, I wish I could. There's probably a bunch more people that I that I could mention right now and even my own players. But, you know, it's just what comes up in the conversation. I just appreciate the opportunity to be on. No problem, man. Anytime. Now wrap things up here in the Connecticut Sports Town Show. So until next time, stay safe. Mary CT stands for Connecticut Town. I'm Mike Jordan. You'll find them all. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody, and be well.